Hey. You guys came back and I am so excited. Welcome back to the Makia Troche channel. Listen, I had some fun today and I'll be able to share that with you guys. I want you guys, when you have an opportunity, check out this video below, especially for you guys, okay? I had fun making this video with my daughter. As you can tell by the title, it's gonna be funny, okay? I want to kind of give you guys some diversity, share a little bit of the fun side of Makia because I know we're gonna be talking a lot about business and building together and things like that. But definitely we wanted to go ahead and make sure that this channel and this content was entertaining uh, both for you and anyone that you decide to share with. Speaking of which, please be sure to hit like, please be sure to share, and please be sure to subscribe to the Makia Troche uh, channel. So listen, what are we talking about today? We're talking about entrepreneurship versus being an employee, okay? And this is something that's very important. I have found that as a bona fide entrepreneur, sometimes we transpose that entrepreneurship onto a person that has no desire to be an entrepreneur, okay? And if you guys are entrepreneurs and you're watching this, I think you might agree with me. You know, you have some people in your camp or on your team or in your circle and you're like, you know what? I am trying to guide you and mentor you into entrepreneurship, but maybe you're just here to be a servant, you know, and that, that's a gift from the Lord. There's nothing wrong. Some people are just there to serve you in your business and you have to appreciate that. But I find a lot of times that we can transpose that pressure of entrepreneurship for people who are just satisfied being an employee. And so today, that is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about entrepreneurship versus being an employee, okay? I definitely don't want to forget the tips that I have for you today. First of all, the, the one thing that I do want to tell you in regards to entrepreneurship, it is something that is innate. It is something that is in you. You know, entrepreneurship doesn't find you, you find it. Most of us that are entrepreneurs knew that we wanted to be an entrepreneur from when we were young. I think I can remember as young as 15 years old that I knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Why? Well, part of it was because my first job, well, one of my first jobs, I did Wendy's. Okay. So I worked at Wendy's for like 30 minutes. Okay. That wasn't happening. I knew from the day that they wanted me to clean up a spill and clean bathrooms. I was like, oh, this is probably not going to work for me. That was like at age 15. Okay. So I had identified with myself early that entrepreneurship would probably be the way for me. Okay. Then I worked at McDonald's and I'm talking about as a teenager. Then I worked at McDonald's and then it was like, you know what? We're going to move you up and you're going to be the manager. And I was like, oh, okay, this is not bad. But then it really didn't come with any pay. I had more responsibility. I had to stay longer than everybody, show up early, leave late. And I was like, <laughs> something was definitely wrong with the dynamics of that situation. Do you get what I'm saying? And so... As I started to get older, I realized that entrepreneurship was in me. So as young as I want to say maybe 19, I started JNS Cleaning and Floor Service Business. This was a commercial business my husband and I did. We did uh, stripping, waxing, uh, tile floors. My husband did sanding and polyurethane on on hardwood floors. I mean, we did the darn thing. Then we branched out and we did commercial cleaning for residential residential and commercial. So, you know, after hours, the person who has your office clean when you come back in, it's us. We're the ones come in after hours, clean your trash, uh, make sure your bathrooms are together, new trash bags, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that was a lot of hard work. That was a lot of labor. Then we tried getting employees and things like that. But then remember, not everybody has the work ethic that you do. And sometimes as an entrepreneur, it can be very, very, very frustrating when people don't operate the way you do. This is when you're supposed to sit back and go, wait a minute, maybe they just don't have that entrepreneur bug or that entrepreneur bite that resides in you. And so we have to really be mindful of it. So again, my point is what? Entrepreneurship usually is already in you and you don't go find it, right? It has found you. It is innate. You were born this way. It was like, I am going to be a fortune uh, 500, uh, you know, 
CEO of my company or whatever, the, whatever it is that you desire, okay? So we have to understand that there's a lot of differences, okay? And we have to understand that it's not for everybody. Entrepreneurship isn't for everyone. Now, most of us today, we're speaking to a lot of people and we're saying, listen, we're pushing entrepreneurship. Why? For multiple reasons that I'm going to go ahead and try to share with you in this short time that I have with you in the video. Please remember to go ahead and like and subscribe, especially if you're enjoying the content so far. Okay. So here's the thing. When we talk about a pro in regards to entrepreneurship, there's no cap on the, the income that you can make. Okay. You can potentially make any amount that you want. Why? Because you're the person controlling your business. What I will say, when I tell you that you're the person that's controlling your business, you need to also keep in mind if you are, would you hire you? Okay. That is very important because some, not all, I know so many phenomenal men and women who are doing a darn thing in their businesses right now. And we work about 59, 60, 70, sometimes 80 hours a week. Now, in the beginning, you may be putting all that work in and getting a little bit on return, but you gotta understand that you need a solid foundation when you're building your business. And so the money is not gonna come right away depending on what business you have. So I don't want to discourage anyone from being an entrepreneur, but I want to be very real with you and let you know that if you're expecting a great rate of return in your investment of your time and the resources that you've put in to build your business, I want you to understand that it takes a few years to get your business up and running, okay? And so some businesses, you know, in the first five years, they fail, but that doesn't mean that you're not an entrepreneur. What it means is that you may have to revamp. You may have to rebrand yourself, okay? I did a fundamental video on branding. You can go ahead and look at it down there. I'll go ahead and uh, post that for you, and you guys can go ahead and check it out. It's very, like I said, it's very fundamental, very basic on what branding is all about. But you may have to rebrand yourself. If you've gone after the same business, maybe you need a business coach, right? A business mentor, right? I'm a business mentor, business coach, right? So maybe you you might need a business mentor or a business coach or someone to kind of guide you, someone who has given or who's already proven that they have a path of success, okay? And so that's gonna be very, very important. I also want you guys to understand, because I had made a comment earlier, would you hire you? So be being an entrepreneur doesn't mean that you get out of the bed at 11, 12 o'clock on a Monday, and then you start your day, and then you're done by five. If that is what you think entrepreneurship is, it's absolutely not. You work harder than you would as an employee, okay? So I need you to understand that the grustle, the grind, and the hustle that you have to put in into being an entrepreneur, it's 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 a lot, I'll be honest. It is a lot. I've started multiple businesses in my life and sometime, and, and sometime during those businesses, I had to rebrand and revamp, but I'm so grateful for the trial and error in order for you to sustain and have something that's going to generate some revenue for your family. Because honestly, let's, let's be honest, that's why you're doing it so that you could create your own, so that you have flexibility, so that you can go on vacation when you want to go on vacation. Can you imagine? Being an employee, and I'm not saying there's nothing wrong. I'm going to talk about being an employee, okay? Because you guys rock as well. But this is what I will say. Can you imagine, you know, you want to go on vacation, but you you can't plan your vacation because you don't know who may have put the vacation in first. And I'll give you I'll give you my own personal story. Not only am I a motivational speaker and author, but my by profession, I'm a registered nurse. So my years as a registered nurse, I wanted to go on vacation, especially I did a lot of traveling. I've been on every side of this world. I've done a lot of traveling in my business, even while I was working full-time as a business, because I want you to understand that you're going to have to stick it out with your job first as you build your business before you leave. Okay. I think I was two years into building my business and then I was able to walk away from being a nurse full-time. But what I wanted to say is, can you imagine when I was like, okay, well, I know I got a business trip coming up. I don't know if my vacation time is going to get approved or not. Those are the things that drive us entrepreneurs to build our businesses 
make a strong foundation and make sure that our businesses are a success because you don't want to wait for somebody else to have to tell you if and when you can go on vacation. Okay. So those are some of the, you know, those are some of the pros and cons that I wanted to make sure that I share with you. Here's another thing. Uh, I told you that already. All right. I told you that a lot of businesses in the beginning that we do, what that we do fail again, revamping, uh, rebranding. That's something that I wanted to make sure I say just because you have to revamp or rebrand does not mean that you have failed. It just means that you go back to the drawing board, change your blueprint to your business. Okay. Here's another thing. As an employee, let's talk about that. Why people like to be an employee, I'll tell you this. It's a steady income with no real responsibility if you're not in a managerial position. So for most people, especially nurses, let's talk about let's talk about nurses. We could talk about any occupation, but because I'm a nurse, let's just go ahead and use that one, okay? You you punch in, you take care of your patients, you clock out. Period the end. And then you're guaranteed to get an income. With entrepreneurship, sometimes a deal may fall through. Maybe something happened at the, right at the closing table, days before closing, and then it's like, boom. And so there went that sale. And then what you got to do, that money that you were accounting for is no longer there. Same thing, whether you're in insurance, whether you're, no matter what your business is, you could be I'm a motivational speaker. So let's just say that I've signed a contract to go ahead and speak somewhere. Something happens and the event is canceled. Okay, the deposit is secured, but then that money that you were counting on, that may not be secured. So you have to understand that there's highs and lows in, in being an entrepreneur. But as an employee, you do not have to worry about that. As long as you do your job, you go in, you clock in, take care of your people, and you go home and you be the best dang on employee that you can be. This is what I want to tell you guys. Okay. I'm kind of going to get kind of close. If you love being an employee, then that's okay. You still can have the mindset that you don't have to stay at entry level. Okay. You can go for a supervisor position, team lead, manager, whatever your heart's desire. Because let me tell you something, the world goes round because we have great employees. Okay. The world also goes round. Because we have great entrepreneurs that are building business, successful businesses and sustaining businesses, and they're able to employ other people. So we're keeping we're we're keeping the, the world go round, whether you're an employee or whether you're an entrepreneur. But I'm just here to let you guys know that if you choose to be an employee, you be the best freaking employee that you can be. Period. The end. You show up early, you leave late. You take the same concepts that we do as an, as an entrepreneur and you apply it to your, you know, to your position. And listen, learn everything. Please don't say, well, that's not in my job description. Make yourself versatile because then when an opportunity presents itself as an employee, you can say, you know what? I was trained in that area. And then you're building your resume just because you didn't turn down any opportunity. So I think that that's really, really important. I want you guys to understand that. Okay. The other thing about being an employee versus a entrepreneur is that you have a fixed schedule. You work 7A to 7P, 7 to 3, 3 to 11, 3A to 3P, 3P to 3A. You guys get the point, right? Entrepreneurs is from sun up to sundown. Okay. Sometimes you're not going to get any sleep in the first few years. And so that's the differences. Some people who are employees like their fixed schedule. Listen, I know what I'm doing, when I'm doing, I know when I'm off. For entrepreneurs, though, we don't really have any days off. We're just grinding every single day because we're trying to build, but there's nothing wrong with it. And again, this whole this whole um, conversation is just showing the differences between being an entrepreneur and being an employee. And there's nothing wrong with either. But I think I wanted to give some attention to the fact that everyone isn't born and everyone isn't called to be an entrepreneur. And that is okay. So I don't want you to feel less than if you feel like your circle or the people that you hang out with, like, girl, why don't you start a business? And maybe you're crafty and maybe you're good at what it is that you do. Oh, hey, dude, man, you're good at what you're doing, fixing cars and all this other stuff. Some people say, no, I only fix my car. Girl, you're good at braiding hair. No, I only braid my children's hair. Some people just don't have it in them. 
Okay, let me tell you something. If I knew how to fix a car and if I knew how to braid hair, I'll have all that under my LLC. I'll be doing everything, braiding your hair, mentoring you and fixing your car while you're filling out your little uh, mentorship paperwork. You get what I'm saying? We're going to do the whole dang on thing, but those are not my gifts and those aren't my skills. Okay, so I want you to just maximize in the area that you're in. All right, let's kind of close this thing up. There is no flexibility okay, in working as an employee, but there's a lot of flexibility as an entrepreneur. And we talked about that a little bit earlier. You know, when you want to go on vacation or you want to take a day off or the kids have a dental appointment or you have an actual appointment or business meetings and things like that, as an employee, you really don't have the flexibility. And the other thing is as an employee, you're capped. Nurses, we're capped. We're only going to make but so much. Most of us will have to work 10 years and then we're going to reach the cap there. And then we're like, oh my goodness, let's go over to another hospital. Maybe management is change maybe something has changed and then we go over to another hospital then they look at our experience and they give us a couple of dollars nobody has time to be chasing money right nobody has time to be chasing the coins in a profession okay and so for me and for those of you out there i decided and i chose that entrepreneurship was what was for me because it's in my blood because i know that i was the best nurse that i could be and i'm still a nurse okay i love being a nurse i am still a nurse i went to school for it I got the plaque for it. I got the degree for it. So I'm always going to be a nurse. But what drives me and what motivates me is entrepreneurship. So I want to know what motivates you. I want you to go ahead and comment below. Are you an entrepreneur? Comment below. Are you an employee reading this, uh, you know, listening to this um, channel? Go ahead and comment below because your, your, your voice, I want to hear it. I want to know how you feel, one, about this content, about this topic. And one, I hope that I gave you some hope that it's okay if you don't want to be an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship is not for everybody. But if you're going to be an employee, you be the best dang on employee that you can be. So listen, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get up off of here. If you got any questions for me, you know how to find me. Here's my email. You can find me on my social media pages. Those are down there for you. And I'm telling you, I'm coming back to you later on with some more content. I cannot wait. I'm so excited about what we're doing on this channel. I hope that you would give us a thumbs up, comment, and hit the subscribe button. And please don't forget to share. I am out of here. XO. Boom.